Alright, kind of a response video. Uh, that Stizor guy, um, you know, has made some sort of video making the argument uh, that, uh, you know, there's all this proof that uh, microbes can survive in space, and it's just such a pile of crap. So anyway, I went to two videos. I'll leave links to them. Um, <laughs> you know, and they're just bullshit stories. I mean, one of them has to do with a space shuttle that blew up, and the fact that they um, they had been doing some experiments you know, on some microbes, and those experiments survived the crash. And that's not exactly a huge surprise. <laughs> I mean, you know, a thermos bottle would have survived the crash. Uh, lots of things could have survived the crash. And I'm sure these microbes were in some sort of container because they didn't want to get contaminated and all this other stuff. And so all they had to be is in some sort of steel jar. And there's no reason why it wouldn't have survived the disintegration of the space shuttle uh, and then the re-entry um, from whatever altitude that was which was high but you know there's no reason why they couldn't survive if they're in a good enough container so that, that that's no you know big big deal I mean that's just that's a meaningless story I mean you know we you know we've probably dropped microbes from uh, weather balloons before and you know it's yeah so whatever that, it's just it's just meaningless mush so anyway, the other story was um, this moon camera, I guess uh, apparently from the original moon landing. They brought back and they found, uh, you know, the common cold had <laughs> survived the trip. Um, but it was inside the camera, <laughs> inside a piece of insulation inside the camera. And that's essentially a spaceship. And so it's, it's, it's again, not miraculous that a cold virus, pretty strong virus, I mean a microbe, um, would um yeah survive um 30 months uh, on a trip okay in a capsule basically a space capsule maybe it's a very small maybe it was just an air bubble in foam insulation uh, but the point is it's a spaceship for a microbe it's a, a rather large space script for, for for a microbe and so it still had an oxygen environment it wasn't exposed to anything but a lack of gravity and certainly microbes aren't going to be terribly disturbed by a lack of gravity, uh, considering most of them um, are nothing more than plankton. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so it's, it's just this desperation to come up with a better story for the life thing, you know, and it's just, it really can smell the, the search for God again. Is people just want to, you know, make this, ex you know, it's just, again, put, the, put it off to someplace else. So life didn't form here as a function of chemistry. No, it somehow got formed someplace else in space. And, uh, you know, that's where God made it. <laughs> you see, you know, that's where God really is, is on that other planet someplace where he made the life thing. Um, because we can't just say it was created here. So it had to be imported. Uh, so we have to be aliens now. Because that makes us more interesting. And it's not just consumption and reproduction, and it's something else. It's imported consumption and reproduction. I don't know what the people are looking for. Um, it just, it's just disgusting. So anyway, it's also a guy commented on my last video, and he made this typical comment like, you know, why, well, we should take life and then plant it like, like Johnny Appleseed. We should go out into the universe and, and, and drop little hunks of uh, um, bacteria and uh, let it do this little Frankenstein evolve game. Uh, just this complete validation of what life is. Now, 99.99% of life is happening down there in, in this in this mush, in this humus that it's living in. 99.9999999999% um, of life is living in there. Um, or is living as a bug. Okay, a little bit bigger kind of a, <laughs> you know... Um, you know, the, just just the rawest kind of existence, okay? Just consume and reproduce. Short lifespan, just get the job done. Um, you know, just we can look at the insect's world and we can just see the machinery, the mechanics of it, the raw brutality of it. Uh, and then you get at this, this higher up on the scale and you get into reptiles and, you know, still really crude mechanics. Um, you got a, you got more of a um, something more touchy feely, you know. Uh, 
that we can relate to, more complex, got the brain things happening, all that crap, uh, but still, just a terribly crude existence, um, you know, live to die, basically, uh, you look at, you know, spawning fish, you know, spend your whole life just eating enough to create enough, you know, eggs and sperm so you can just dump your load and die. Uh, you know, the next generation can eat your little bits, little bits of you that rot as you flow down the stream. Um, for, to accomplish what, for what, for nothing. Uh, because that's the mechanics of the chemistry. And so then you have this little tiny percentage of life, after billions and billions and billions of years, a little tiny percentage of it um, does this, let's write some Shakespeare, let's care, let's cry, let's... Uh, get all emotional and passionate and have, you know, little lovey feelings and all that kind of crap. Let's get a more complex psychology and a more complex and more eccentric and bizarre way to do this basic thing of, you know, consuming and then reproducing and then dropping the fuck dead. Um, and, and why? You know, what? What's what? So how many billions of times do you have to do it? How many billions of times before you said, okay, well, that's enough of this. I mean, we don't, you know, it's all kind of same old, same old, isn't it? Same old game. Oh, yeah, well, let's have some kids, and let's watch some of them die of cancer, and let's watch this car accident, let's watch this horror, let's witness this, let's feel this, let's, I mean, what, what, what is it? Come on, what are you talking about? You want to impose that into space for some reason. You want to start more of that game all over again billions of years just to get to a human being that might nuke themselves in three weeks um, you know we're, we've run out of we're all in debt to each other or you know to, to a tiny percentage of the human population that's going to ruin us all um, you know terrible conflict created because of this complex psychology you know the soap operas it creates the drama all over the fucking place just oozing drama uh, and yeah, you want to impose that on the peace and quiet of space. Um, I just, I just don't get it. I mean, what the hell is going on in your fucking head? I mean, what? What? What about your life is just so fucking magnificent? I just don't see it. I'm sorry. Uh, but that's the nature of addiction, I guess, is that you're going to validate it first, you're going to rationalize it, you're going to glorify it, and then you're going to think there's cause to impose it on somebody else. Uh, <laughs> just create the next victim. It's kind of, it's kind of like the uh, the victim, the abuse, who becomes the abuser. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a weird, uh, it's a real psychology, but I'm still going to call it weird and fucked up. <laughs> you know, it's sick. Sorry, but you're just sick little Frankensteins in love with the Frankenstein concept. And, uh, but you can't defend it with anything rational. Um, just some sort of vague notion that you're accomplishing something. Well, that's really not good enough. Um, and when you, like I said, when you look at the real context of how life is living, what it's living as, uh, and the brutality of that life to sit there and just have no um, apprehension um, fear um, yeah I just you know you people scare me you scare me so anyway this real video was really just about the whole idea though that you know here we have you know people finally get past the God concept but they're just trying to reinvent it in some other form now it's it's so many other forms it's Gaia earth breathing monster it's feeling atoms or uh, it's imported life life had to come from far far away in the universe and make a long journey to come to the earth so it could it could you know squirm around like a worm <laughs> you know for a few billion years I mean come on uh, it's just so insane and stupid. Uh, all right, so anyway, and so I just wanted to point out that this crap that these microbes are surviving space trips is kind of just bullshit. They're surviving if they're if they have a, a capsule, a space capsule, they survive. Um, otherwise, they're not going to survive. Um, and uh, it might be possible, theoretically, um, you know, like if a comet hit Earth, it would shoot a bunch of stuff into space. 
you know, maybe it's possible inside some clay or something that a microbe might be able to survive, uh, but for how long? I mean, this is a question. Um, and it's just, it's hard, you know, because you're talking temperatures that are just going to be really tough for, for not, not to end up sterilizing uh, all that matter. Uh, the amount of radiation and everything else, uh, you know, it just is, you know, anyway, I'm just saying it's a theoretical possibility, but it's meaningless anyway, um, you know, because uh, I, the way the earth was before life flourished on this planet, if life today landed in that, on that earth, it wouldn't survive, it would die, because it, there was not, it wasn't an environment it could survive in, and that's another trick to this whole biology of life thing is the first you know I made the argument that the that there should be competing life on earth and there really should um, if life happened more than once because it would have the first these first living things too you got to remember when the first when the first reproducing cell thing happens it doesn't have built into it a death mechanism all right the first living thing is a, is a life mechanism and all it does is live and it just takes over everything it spreads like a virus like a, a crystal it just it just moves through the structure and uh, the first living thing on earth likely did that and somehow you know it had to change it had to alter itself uh, not alter itself wrong way to put it it had to it was altered through m mutation in time um, where it was able to start consuming the mass that it had created because it would basically consume the environment it would cover every surface it would it would suffocate itself in its own piss and urine and so it would have to adapt to be able to eat that piss and urine <laughs> it would it would um, and it would also have to adapt to a system of mortality that balanced its reproduction um, because it would just be a feast and famine kind of situation um, until it established that balance and it would it would consume all there was to consume and then it would starve um, so anyway there was even that's another barrier that the a, a living thing a living machine has to get over is that barrier that it will consume its island environment um, because it's always going to exist on an island it's always going to be confined on a planet or on something contained in the vacuum of space and it's going to <laughs> it's going to have to learn how to live on that island uh, without um, um, suffocating itself with its own reproduction so it's just another hurdle that a, the, a living thing has to overcome to ever get to this level to ever get on the evolutionary um, path is one of the things that has to develop is a mechanism for dealing with the fact that it's going to alter the environment and that's what it did it completely altered the environment it created the oxygen atmosphere um, and then it had to learn how to live in that atmosphere but anyway, uh, it had to adapt to living in that atmosphere. You know, you gotta be careful how you word things, because people will nitpick things to pieces. So anyway, um, that's enough of a video, I think. Yeah. It's cold. Yeah. Yeah.